What's going on, Reject Nation? We are here to watch the season finale of Peacemaker! This has been an amazing journey. I want to thank everyone who's been with us since the first episode. Even in spite of all the copyright claims and limited ads, this has been an amazing journey. Speaking of claims, we got a sponsor for today's video, and this is a sponsor that I've been trying to work with for quite a while, because every time I see them shattered out in a YouTube video, I go, why haven't they contacted us yet? And the second they did, I went, yes, thank you! And that is Display. Displate offers more than a million designs from over 40,000 artists. From beautiful original art to some of our favorite IPs like Marvel, Star Wars, and DC. And each one is individually printed on super durable metal by Displate's master of production. And the best part is they're super easy to install and switch out. We just hung two <laughs> minutes before shooting this. You don't need any power tools, which is great for a guy like me, thanks to their magnet based mounting system, which takes all of about 20 seconds to install, display, and start swapping out your displates. Since we're here in Greg's home, he got this awesome Batman displate, which is now being displayed proudly right behind his head. Along with a few other pretty awesome ones that you'll see probably in the coming weeks. Displate ships to over 56 countries in about four to five business days. So now's the perfect time to start growing and showing your collection. My collection is a grower. Displates are great alternatives to paper and canvas printing. And when you hit our special link down in the description box, you'll get an extra little disc count on your order, which is about the most patriotic thing I can think of. Like Peacemaker! So support the channel by checking out some awesome displates. Yes, they sent us over a couple for free because we're doing a, a sponsorship, but I already have some queued up that I'm gonna buy already I've myself. Already a couple <laughs> yeah. Let's make some peace by checking out some Peacemaker. Mom, there are way more butterflies than we thought, and the whole team is injured. So I, I was thinking, like, maybe you could call in the Justice League. Which version of the Justice League? Human Torpedo. So you aim your head at whatever you want to destroy, and you become a... Human Torpedo. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> put it on, Adrian. I'm going to put a walkie in it and activate it from here. And then maybe you can put on activate anti-gravity and just float it over there. Uh, guys? Uh-oh. Fuck! Deactivate anti-gravity! Deactivate anti-gravity! Ugh. You'd fish and line over the barn for one of these trees here and just let the helmet slide down. Like Green Arrow? No, not like Green Arrow. <gasps> Rony conventions dressed in the back half of Twilight Sparkle with a four-inch wide butthole drilled in the costume. <laughs> Maybe so we can breathe properly. <laughs> She mentioned Green Arrow. No, I actually heard that's true about Green Arrow, but that's the first thing he said that's real. An Aquaman fucking fish. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a team member capable of flight. Hey. Equally. I need you to take that helmet and drop it on top of that barn. No way can an eagle understand what you're saying. You don't know this eagle. Prove her wrong. Eagly, take it. No, Eagly, just take take the helmet. Take it. Eagly, take the helmet. Eagly, take the helmet. <laughs> good, Eagly, good. good Is Eagly doing it? Be safe, Eagly. <laughs> For the love of God. Poison bluegum, fucko. Well, why don't you just go for your peace, cub stain? You're metaphorical, douchewad. My gun's real. I don't want the butterflies to hear. Ha! I almost tricked you. <laughs> Ooh. So I can kill you all over again. What are you doing? Nothing. Holy shit! Huh? Oh. Ghost dead. <laughs> Oh, ouch, oh. ouch. That was brutal. The only way for us to get the helmet inside of the barn is by one of us going in undercover. John, you're the only one. And why are these wet? I washed them in the creek. Why? One of the things us warriors seldom talk about is how often people shit themselves when they die. <laughs> They're aliens. Do they even speak English? They retain the memories of the bodies they've taken over, so they seem to primarily use English when communicating. Fuck, fine. <laughs> Head towards the barn like you know what you're doing. Relax your face. Shut up. Huh? No. You relax your face. Hey. Fuck. I'm going inside. 
Why? Tell him what to say. Because of this bag. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> oh no. Whoa. <laughs> No. Fuck it. No more kaijus. No more kaijus. It's a nice call back to the suicide squad. Yeah. Count my ass. It's a motherfucking catapult. Stop talking. Stop talking. The man you've taken over. Why did he do that to his beard? <laughs> Why did he color his beard all strange like that? He thought it made him look younger and more handsome. <laughs> he had a girlfriend, so we thought dyeing his beard might help. But he was also lazy and busy with his job. Uh huh. And when he did, he used the cheapest brand because he was incredibly underpaid. He never thought anybody noticed until recently, when one guy said it to him all the time. Oh, oh no, that's awful. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Make me cry right now. <laughs> Die beard! Die beard! <laughs> L'Oreal probably is worth the extra few bucks. Hey! That guy just put this down here. Oh no. Save him. Fuck, do it now. Do it. Activate son of What the fuck? Oh no. My hands are sweaty. Knees Get in there. <sighs> bang, bang, bang. Save him. No! Activate Sonic Boom! Oh. Wow! <laughs> no. Ron Economos. He had like three to four charges, right? Yeah. Ooh. Nice, nice. Oh, I feel, I feel bad for this cow. <laughs> I know. It's got one tooth. It must be a baby. Yeah, that's it for the charges. <laughs> Full on shield. I can help. We need you to stay here, Ads. If something happens to us, you're the only hope. What's the plan, man? Let's go kill a cow. Do you really want to do you really want to do <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for this on to come into the blood. But because of copyright, you won't hear a bunch of it. Blood bath. Bring the peace! Bring the peace! <laughs> oh, cool. Get up, peacemaker. Whoa. Oh, darn it. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. No. Oh no, come on. No, no, no. 
She's your girlfriend, James Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do Keep that. Keep her alive. <laughs> it's gotta be in season two. <laughs> what the fuck do we do? Wait, what are you doing? We get out there. No, no, Adebay, you can't. You'll get hurt. Do a wheel. Hey, what makes you think you can do this? Because I'm made for this shit. She's the daughter of Waller. That's right. Oh! Oh, what the fuck? Oh my god! No! <laughs> No, oh, no, 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 keep your mouth closed. Out of fire, goddamn, dude. Lay it down. Jail. <laughs> oh, she might die otherwise. Ow. Ew. Ew, oh no. Peace. <laughs> Go. And do what? Leona. Oh, 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 dude. Damn, you got there fast, man. Yeah, hey, good crawler. <laughs> My god, she has become Peacemaker. <laughs> the Ark. <laughs> uh, good mislead. <laughs> Damn. Wow! <laughs> what a shot! <laughs> Oh my god. No, I love you. Stop fighting. Follow me. Was this just a big misunderstanding? Our kind traveled here from a planet that had become unlivable. The cow would help the last of our people survive for another hundred years. Not long after we arrived, we realized the people of Earth were on the exact same trajectory as our people had been. <laughs> Ignoring science in favor of populist leaders who tell you that the floods and the fires and the disease are unrelated to your own actions. Treating minor inconveniences as assaults on your freedom. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Heavy shit. <laughs> we made a vow to make the choices for you that you were incapable of making on your own. To save your people and your world no matter how many lives it cost us. Peace. <laughs> no matter how many men, women, and children we gotta kill to get it. Thank you for feeding me and talking to me and showing me kindness. <laughs> Join us in saving your planet. <laughs> Activate human torpedo. What? <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let him live. No, no. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you gotta be shitting me. You're late, you fucking dickheads. <laughs> Fuck another fish, asshole. <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of that. It's rumor. really him. It's not a rumor. <laughs> Holy balls! What? I can't believe they got this guy's fucking Perry. Oh man. Dang. Is that Henry Cavill? <laughs> <laughs> no Henry Cavill, no Gal Gadot. <laughs> oh man. That is, that is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're shot. You gotta be a bit of. <laughs> I'm fine, seriously. All I need is a good nap. <laughs> I'm so sick of that rumor. <laughs> Why did you choose not to help them? Because of your proto-fascist libertarian idea of freedom? <laughs> because I knew they'd hurt you and the others if I did. I'm sorry I betrayed you. Man of just blows it off. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Don't tell V, but after Eagley, you're my BFF. Oh. <laughs> Both the peacemaker <laughs> and the costumed crime fighter vigilante were working in a deep cover operation. For oh, 
God. This is all part of a black ops program known as Task Force X. Whoa, dang. It's been running for years out of Bell Reef Prison. Oh, dang. It is a command of a, of a woman named Amanda Waller. What the fuck? <gasps> I heard you've been out there for days. Oh, all oh, that's oh. sad. <laughs> Ah, the costumes. Pops. Ah, the real piece is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> no way. Have they removed the bomb in his head? <laughs> I, I I would hope by now. <laughs> oh, eagly. It's like a perfect season. Yeah. That yeah, was, near perfect season. <laughs> that was really gracefully done, yeah. Wow. Golly. That's crazy. Did you just see the show like that? <laughs> yeah, I, I did not see that like, coming. <laughs> one of the shots was like, what I look like? I was like, that's a really good uh, looking uh, double for uh, Jason. Well, that is Jason. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Still has to live with that. <sighs> that haunting shadow of his father in his life. Can't just get over something like that. It's also a good way to keep Robert Patrick around for season two. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get off that easy. Sarcasm. I haven't noticed you eating way more corn chips than any one human being should eat. And I'm not worried that you're going to die. Oh. But I, I am worried that you're going to die. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Crazy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, yes, good stuff. Well, that was one hell of a finale. I think. I think what's interesting though is because you have this Justice League cameo. It's probably going to be the first thing that everyone's <laughs> mainly talking about in terms of what this episode did. And here we are talking. The first thing we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's going to be the juggernaut <laughs> in the room. <laughs> yeah, because I <laughs> overshadow everything. Yeah, well, we'll get it out of the way then, really quick. Because, um, yeah, like. You know, when you have the four appear, there's no cyborg, there's no Batman. Interesting choice. Yeah. I do wonder, I, I bet he had to, like James Gunn had to probably consult a little bit. I wonder, I wonder. I imagine he would have to have had some type of discussion of like who he could use and who he couldn't use. Yeah. And it's like, you know, getting Gallagher, that was kind of a hard prospect, but you know, getting, uh, it's like they kept Superman vague Yeah. as to who he is. Some shots I'm like, could be a supergirl even no cyborg definitely stands out cyborg definitely could have been there the blue lighting is snyder mm -hmm. whereas we've been seeing with the flash it's more yellow as of late um but yeah this is james gunn saying restore the snyder merge right <laughs> yeah i could see some people being upset that we didn't get like a, a clear-cut henry cavill that it's like just pure shazam type of cameo yeah. in a way um, but I liked it. I was I was so in, in awe that I wasn't even really processing the dialogue there at the time. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. My mind started going like, "Hey, Gotham is what's going to become this? This is be something more significant for the future of the DCEU." Yeah. <laughs> this is implying a whole bunch of new spinoffs involving the Suicide yeah. Squad and the Justice League. Yeah. That whole joking banter about you know fucking another fish. I was like, I hope that didn't even really process it humorous wise at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like really, really <laughs> yeah. late to it. But uh, yeah, that was surprising. And, but in terms of like a, a season overall, it, it, it's interesting. I like the ambiguity of how they ended it with Chris at the end, mm -hmm. you know, with seeing his dad there on the porch beside him. Like he's, it seems like he's gained some freedom now that he's not, no, he's no longer part of Task Force X. He gets to live there as just himself. It seems like they let him go free. I imagine there's no bomb in his head anymore. <laughs> um, 
And as much as he's come into his own and has made friends and such and can live his own life, form his own identity, you know, it's he did kill his father and his father is a big part of what shaped him into the person he was throughout this whole journey. So I like the kind of like, he'll be okay, but there's still more work that it has to do, that he will still be haunted by this thing. And it's like, can Chris still go on? Can Chris still function, you know? And I think it's like a, a neat, more realistic, uh, nuanced way to end his journey that he's been on so far, where he's still like, he still has disturbing, traumatic things he has to work through, in spite of the fact of how much better of a human being he has evolved uh, throughout the course of this journey. So I think that's a, it's a powerful, poetic way to end all this. And, you know, like he, it, it seemed like, okay, the big part of what would allow Chris to be free is to free himself of his father. And now in death, he's still haunted by him. Yeah. It's very fascinating stuff. And I, and I like the, the so, sometimes I'm not a big fan of like ghost dad or for it especially to happen so soon. You know, because like last episode he died, and the very next episode it's like he's already experiencing Ghost Dad. Mm -hmm. But it works here for me. <laughs> well, I think it's just the simple twist that it's an antagonistic presence and it's a struggle. It's not like some ambiguous thing that is, you know, encouraging him or motivating him to act. And it's not something that's mm -hmm. coming out of comfort. It's it's a you know it's. It's the lack of freedom, you know, uh, that was achieved in that action. It's like, yeah, even though he wiped his dad out, the guilt and all the things that would be, you know, just sort of warmed into your psyche from so many years of this person are still there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, it feels like an authentic device because it spells trouble for Chris moving ahead and torment of some variety for him moving ahead. And of all the things, like I thought they did a really nice job of, yeah, bringing all these character arcs, especially for Chris, to a very graceful close by the end of the season. And having Ghost Dad around is about the one thing at this juncture. I, I like when a show can end in a way where I'm like, damn, what are you, what are you gonna do for season two? Like, where are we gonna go with this character? But that's one nugget where I'm like, well, he's definitely gonna have to keep on dealing with the fallout from that and it's nice because you know i mean as much as uh augie smith is a terrible 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 human being of a character it also makes it feel like you know the presence not that i guess there are a lot of white dragon fans out there who are like ah gone too soon but you know it allows you to maintain that character well beyond too and keep a terrific actor in robert patrick so very true yeah it's they let every character arc here out of bio i mean just with her journey of being able to just live in truth for the first time mm. not feel like she has to hide anymore like accept who she's the daughter of unveil the truth of what's been going on like not continue on the the evil deeds of what her mother does because mm -hmm. that she seemed like she was go that was the path she was headed down was just following in the footsteps of the messed up twisted ways amanda waller is and instead exposes it all which i gotta imagine creates some type of trajectory for the dceu moving forward at least in terms of how you handle task force sex which has always been a very secretive program yeah. and now to make it public that does shift how things can move forward like i i wonder what ramifications this series will lead with with the movies i know we got flashpoint coming up which is gonna mess with time the way the timeline is here yeah. uh however i'm like okay i mean we're just gonna like stick with a specific timeline for peacemaker and watch how the ramifications of that unfold will there be another suicide squad movie you There's know supposed to be another spin-off in the works for yeah, we hbo our, yeah but we don't know what it is no yeah um, so yeah, and then even with uh, Die Beard, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is so touching, you know, I thought it was cool to like finally acknowledge that, bring it back around, mm -hmm. and you see there when he arcs as well, like he's essentially the short version is he felt like a loser the, his entire life, and you know, like he was never accepted into something, and then he goes back to his shitty desk job, but he has he's generated a memory mm -hmm. he's generated an experience where he felt worthy and connected you know <laughs> and where he really had to rise to occasions yeah yeah i think that's cool and then uh harcourt obviously you know morphing into a leader and learning to trust connect mm. where she always shut people off 
So they had really great character journeys yeah. like throughout. It, it, it was awesome. It was really cool. Like I thought everyone arced really well. And of course with the butterflies, you know, it's like the most overtly political it seems this show has gotten. Yeah. Uh, for Peacemaker especially, who was pitched to us initially um, uh, with the lead up to the Suicide Squad as like a messed up version of Captain America, at least that's kind of the way John Cena put it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, just with you know what who the character is, there's naturally a political inheritance that comes with the exploration of his dad and what he stands for. Yeah, yeah, yada. Uh, but to find out the motivations is probably the most, you know, political commentating of the current way the state of the world is mm -hmm. in a way that's most likely to trigger people. It's like, really, oh, you're hitting a political night show. But I don't know. I thought it was a f fresh spin on. On aliens, you know, like uh, we, because when we were first, when she was for uh, Goff was first unveiling what their motive was, I'm like, okay, I've heard this like a billion times of mm -hmm. like, oh, our planet sucked and we were we needed sources, so we came here, you know, and then to put an extra spin on it of we saw you guys were actually headed on the same path our planet was on. And a lot of it has to do with the way your leadership decides to avoid things and, and chalk it up to being something else. Just completely be dismissive of the fact that your race is responsible for why this earth is deteriorating and that's gonna lead to your extinction. So we're gonna try to change it, mm -hmm. you know? I, I thought that like made a very, like that, that's refreshing to me in, in a way that it feels apt to the way the world is today. Yeah, I thought they articulated that really, really well. And I think that helps to sell it because, yeah, it keeps it from being the flimsy old, oh, you, you're not capable of steering your own ship. Let us do it for you. Haha. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I loved that they were able to bring you to a point where mm -hmm. when Adebayo asks him, why didn't you help them? There's a decent conversation to be had surrounding that, and ultimately, yeah, it does come down to we need to be able to make our own choices, whether or not those are the right choices. We need to maintain that autonomy, but, you know, by that point where, uh, yeah, Goff is laying it out, I was like, oh, in this moment, even though I don't, I ultimately don't imagine he will help them, I'm still kind of conflicted and I can see this as being a, a difficult, you know, sort of moment of truth right here. And I think it's exemplary throughout the whole show that, yeah, you have so many rich character beats, rich subtextual beats like that alongside, it never, there's something magic about the way James Gunn writes these things where it feels like it has it all in the sense that, you know, you've got a really rollicking, well paced fun sci-fi adventure with crazy bone crunching action and yet it's never at the expense of you know real resonant character like this, this made me like cry a couple times just for the personal relationships as well as like the sort of desperate like for as much as there have been scenes where the butterflies are, are very sinister like i did start to feel for them and even for the cow by the end of wow this is just sort of a, a really messed up circumstance they're doing the best that they can it doesn't really click exactly with what we are and how we exist here and that's a muddy situation and it feels feels appropriate for, you know, a Task Force X type of operation to deal with this and then to ultimately have that debate. And uh, yeah, it was, I was, it was, and, he, and even, you know, further on when she's asking him, like, what are you going to do with your, like, proto-fascist uh, libertarian, however she, she sizes him mm -hmm. up, like, there's so much wonderful understanding of the sort of image of the character and then what informs that at the core and uh yeah it's it's a like a really wonderful deconstruction without having that be like the main thing about it mm -hmm. you know yeah i think it's interesting what they did with the cow is is kind of similar to starro in a lot of ways mm -hmm. of um you know like this creature really doesn't have malicious evil intent no and I feel bad for it in the end when it's dying. <laughs> it's almost, yeah it's, yeah, it's sadder because in this sense- it's, This one's way sadder than Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, because it's just chilling and it's just doing its thing, you know, yeah. for, for its species or for, you know, its adjacent species. And it had a chance to live, just teleported out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, they, they did a really great job at, at layering it. That was an unexpected thing, but 
the action was good too. Some of the best action out of yeah. the whole series, I would say. Uh, for that whole fight at the end, it was really rewarding, cathartic. And I even like that. A bio got to come in there and whoop some ass too. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the way the gunplay was done was really, really cool. Gunplay, the stunts, the, the camera choreography combined with the fight choreography, especially in that long take where they're fighting all mm -hmm. the butterflies, like that was mightily impressive. I'd be very curious to hear James Gunn's breakdown of the use of the theme song because it always felt like it had a different mood or tone per opening scene yeah right like it was the same song and then we heard someone telling us that james gunn talked about this recently aaron alexander our friend was talking to us about this that he said james gunn was talking about it and i, I always felt that that in, in some ways it always recontextualized a little bit but then to use it at that specific scene too i'm like a really wonder what the purpose is of like what's his vision of you know of, of using it and mm. and what it really meant to him yeah because it's such a unique experience because yeah it's like they, when you upon repeat he, hearing the song over each episode yeah there's something uncanny that i haven't been able to identify but yeah it does feel different every time and i don't think i've ever experienced that because you know so many things don't have a reason to repeat sure. a song over and over but yeah like that that is a nuance I, I find very sort of elusive but impressive well here we are guys peacemaker overall a pretty amazing season i give it like a solid minimum like 9.8 <laughs> out of that i think i try to think back of like you. what were some things i complained about it was never much they made vigilante a bit more dumb you know in the previous two episodes but that's about the only thing i could think of a bit more dumb than he needed to be maybe but i can't it's really think of perfect. much to gripe about no i've been i've been so enthralled on every level like it's fun it's got the cool action shit it's got some touching qualities it's got sometimes the banter brains. moments don't really work for me 99 percent of the time they do but like every once in a while there's a scene where i'm like eh. Yeah, it's like that whole ant scene. I didn't really didn't find that funny. Yeah, and I guess the saving grace to me is that even in the banter bits that, that I wouldn't necessarily be laughing at, they still felt in character, so I was fine with them just being scenes. True, that's, good, that's what I mean. Yeah, there's always a, a way to like kind of explain it. Mm -hmm. And Eagle gets to live. Eagle, I'm so happy. Guys, what did you think about Peacemaker finale overall? And what do you think about the season overall? Leave your thoughts down below. Thank you for being here. And thank you again to Displate for sponsoring this video. Hit up the links in the description box to get yourself a Displate order as well. And last but not least, let's do a paper. <laughs> Scuba Steve. Scuba, I think you would be a wonderful addition to the Peacemaker cast when season two rolls around. Think about it. They talked about it here in this episode too. Going underwater with that Peacemaker helmet, that might not come in handy, but clearly they can't rely on Aquaman, so they need some kind of obscure, weird, eccentric superhero that you know, borderline criminal that they would need to join with them on their mission to going underwater. Who better than Scuba Steve? Looks incapable, looks goofy at first, but then bam, you put him underwater, gets killed off in the first 30 seconds of his screen time, drowns. Apparently Scuba Steve wasn't reliable and you're used for a throwaway bit. Just when we think you might be able to help us out, you die. First 30 seconds. Why'd you let us down? But for you, moment of fame. What more could you ask for? Yeah, I did that. I subverted expectations. Yeah, there you go. Then Scuba Steve shows up in the post credit scene and then you think he's gonna be alive. He's just still dead. He's just dead. He's just dead. We subvert expectations mm -hmm. by not being creative enough to come up with what the scenario would be for Scuba Steve to get involved or what the power set would be. Mm -hmm. Don't want to do all that thinking. Nah, it's too late. This is better.